Thursday at 7 o'clock, and that means Full Throttle Vision is here rocking and rolling. We love doing this show every Thursday night, 7 to 8 o'clock. I am your host, Tony C. I don't know where I'm I think I'm looking right there. So I'm looking right there tonight. Am I looking at the right spot, John? The man who makes me know what I'm doing. Yes. Yes, I got the yes. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Full Throttle Vision. Again, I'm your host, Tony C. And C. Tony C., that's what I go by. John, where are you at? You going to pop up somewhere? There's the man right there. What's John up? Gaston from Tampa Bay Multimedia. Making me look good, making the show look good. That's what he does. I mean, you're clearer than I am. What, ha what happened here? Look how clear you are. Man, you must be zoomed in real big on me because I look, I look, I've been eating a lot, though. Maybe I, I uh -oh. camera add 10 pounds. Is that what happened here? Supposedly. Uh oh, that's, listen, I believe it. And then we got my black new. I know, that's cool. <laughs> Too funny. Anyways, um, <laughs> You said something before we started the show. We were discuss We were kind of talking a little bit about it. Uh, today is one of those days that you remember probably your entire life. That's correct. Um, and we were discussing this in the office today. 9/11. Uh, you know, 13 years ago. Four, 13 years ago. Um, we were discussing it, and it's it's a shame because my daughter is nine. She has no idea, you know, what it's about. And we were talking in the office, and I said, you know, it's like the Challenger. I wasn't. I was too young. When did the Challenger happen? That was 84, 85, 86, something like that? 84. I was four years old. I think old, it's 84. So yeah. I, I don't remember the, 80, the the Challenger, but that's another one of those. And when Martin Luther King died, when JFK was shot, those are places people remember where they were, what happened, what they were doing. Yep. Um, you know, I, I wanted to start off the show tonight, and uh, you know, I was going to tell a little bit of my story, where I was, and what I was doing. John, I'm sure you know exactly what you were doing. I know exactly where I was. And you have a story. Yeah. I was uh, uh, 20. I was 21 years old, and I was living in a house, I believe, by myself at the time in Tarpon Springs. I woke up, and uh, my dad called me. He was in the shower listening to the radio. He had one of those radio showers. Nice. And uh, you know, somebody come on and said, "Hey, uh, some plane hit the." towers so he calls me and says turn on the radio turn on tv you gotta look and see what's going on somebody hit the towers and it was like real close to the time when i think i i was sitting there watching and i i, I remember i had buddies living with me that's what it was we were kind of like in a frat house uh we all lived in and <laughs> kind of kind of in a frat house i that's, i woke up hilarious. and I, I sat there watching it and uh <laughs> the other plane hit and and i i just i ran and got everybody up and it was just i don't know it was it's still to this day that day was probably the most terrifying day of my life. Because all of a sudden you had the two planes hit, then it was the, the radio and the TV was, there's another one hijacked, there's another one this. Oh my God, the Pentagon was hit. And it was like, holy crap, where does it end? And then when you start thinking about it, you know, and the stories afterwards where people were jumping out of those buildings because they didn't want to fight, you know, burn to death. And, and, and the video, I watched the video. Did you watch, see MSN today was playing the, um, uh, they played the 9-11 day. Yeah, they and I watched that all morning. Um, it was it's just sad, man. I cried. I cried today. I don't care. I'll tell you all day long. I'm a big bad biker, but every day on this this day when they do that moment of silence at nine o three, and then it was nine forty six nine when the when the two towers and then when they fell, it's just uh, yeah. then you know it's a sad day. Uh, it makes you think about all the stuff going on and everything and. You know what uh, happened on that flight 93 that went down into the uh, grass that, that was what was that aimed for the let's go that was the other one going for the Pentagon there was supposed to be two hit the Pentagon was it two to hit the Pentagon or was well, that one going for the one White House, hit they said one no, hit it one hit and the other one yeah went down it's a it's a tough day I stopped by this morning uh, Tarpon Springs in front of their police department and fire department has a piece from the 9-11 building from the World Trade Center and uh, they made the a, a, kind of metal uh, thing there. They've done it for the past few years there. And I stopped by this morning, I took a picture of it. And uh, you know, it's it's just, to, to me, today's one of those days where it should be a national holiday and everybody should kind of get a day off and remember what's going on. Not, not Absolutely. like, you know, and not like Memorial Day or Labor Day where everybody wants to party and have a good time. No, this should be one of those days where you just, you know what, it's mandatory you spend it with your family or something like that, you yeah. know? I don't I, know, they can't do it, but it'd be great. Totally agree. I know well, one, one fear I had, my brother was on an uh, aircraft carrier coming back. They were leaving, he made a post today, and I read it. He, uh, they were on their way after like a nine month cruise. They were oof. on their way back. He said they were watching it on the, on the aircraft carrier, what happened. The carrier did a complete 180, and they went back to the Gulf and sat there for another four or five months until they could get a relief in there. It was, he was one of the only cruises that did uh, 
multiple war time, and he's got medals and all the stuff for it because it was like, you know, they were out there, they were coming home, and they said, nope, you're going to go right back. And, uh, you know, brother's a Navy chief, so pretty pretty cool. He's a hero out there doing what he does for the community, for the country, and that's cool. So, you know, that's my little 9-11 stuff that I know. John, let's talk about uh, where you were and all the stuff happening on 9-11 with you. Oh, well, 9-11 for me is my, let me see, Cage had, was two, no, no, one, just turned one, round one, and um, I was helping a buddy of mine paint a um, barn here in Tarpon, and it was kind of funny, we, during it, what it was happening, I mean, I, because, I, you know, you hear planes flying over all the time around here, and I, I said to Ken, I'm like, dude, you know how quiet it is? He's like, that's weird because normally that time of the morning, the pattern is over us. Yeah. So everything's coming in and going out. And it was just like dead silence. Next thing I know, his cell phone rings and his wife says, "You need both of you need to just clean everything up, pack everything up, and get up here as soon as possible. And we're like, okay. Where was here? Tarpon. Oh, up here. Up we were right over Tarpon. Matter of fact, I was literally, there's a, there's a lot over here behind our house where they they got it fenced off now. It's a little, it's a little grassy nut lot with some boats back there. Yeah. Well, there used to be a big barn out there, and there used to be a big yellow trimaran, which was my buddy's. So he yeah. rented that whole lot and the whole nine yards. That's where all of his construction stuff was, and you know, so we went up there, and next thing you know, we're like, oh my god! And we got up to his house just in time to see the second plane hit. That was uh, nine, uh, nine. Was that nine oh three? It was nine oh three, I believe, when the second plane hit. So I mean, that's early in the morning. You got to think nine oh three. You're that's not. Yeah. You know. So you were up and about, out and moving. You know. I know the first. I don't know when the first one. It was eight thirty something. It was. It was early because there wasn't. You know, from, from what I've heard in the past, it was early enough where a lot of people weren't in those buildings yet. Right. There, yeah. It, it, the 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 casualties could have been. Outrageous if if it was ten, eleven, twelve o'clock. You know what I mean? Oh, but, it would have been brutal. But at uh, at that time, people were just getting coffee, moving on their way into work, and you know saw it and either said just get out and you know we we actually knew. I, I, there's a woman around here in the motorcycle community that we know that uh, she came up and shared her story with us one year. She was on in in the second building, and um, was it first building? first building and she was coming down the stairs and got out right before you know it fell and just bolted and she's she has a hard time still telling the story to this day i remember talking to her about it and she, I can imagine. she told us a little bit about it and stopped and said i it's as far as i can go and it was like nobody pressed her or pushed her or anything oh, like no. that no it's just not, a, it's not worth it no it's and today you know what and then now you got all this i don't know if it's isis or isil or all this terrifying stuff and you know what uh, I, I don't know what to say it's we're here, and I, I'm glad we have our military and people to protect us, and that's what it's all about. And you know, president made a pretty good speech. I'm not going to lie. Did you see? The, did you happen to see his speech? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, everybody's got mixed comments, but you know what? He's at least he's out there saying it ain't going to. You know, same thing <clears throat> Bush did when it when it happened. He's, no. You know. No, not, no. 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 What? He he did not say the same thing as Bush. Well, you can't. He, he didn't, didn't say the say same exact thing. Near, he didn't even say it with a quarter of the intensity that Bush said it at. The, the same message was relayed, I would say, but oh. how, maybe maybe the way it was uh, addressed is different. But you know what? We are we are fighting it. We we do see that. We know that. We're not going to let that crap happen here again. No, ever. Oh no. Well, I don't. I don't think Americans themselves will let that happen anymore. No, Listen, president or not, at th- this time, as 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 so charged up as the American people are right now. The, the president doesn't mean anything when it comes to Because if we had to take matters in our hands, we probably would. It's true. And you know what's funny? And I know this is probably a heated subject. I probably shouldn't bring this up. But my, my wife and I sat there and said, you know, unfortunately, you can't help but racial profile some of the, you know, when you see that anymore and you go, you, you go to the, get on an airplane, you see somebody with the, what's, what's the official, you know, you see an Arab yeah. descent person wearing the robes and wearing the stuff. You you can't help but cringe. I don't care who you are in this world. You can't help but sit there and go two looks at them. Even if that's all you do, you're moving on. It's it is what it is. I hate to say it. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, 
in this country, they'll. I don't care how hard we work on it and how kind, how hard we're all going to say, oh, we're not going to do this anymore. There, there will be profiling. Period. Oh, it's. We profile every day, whether we like it or not. I, I don't care. Single. You, you can't, day. and everybody. I don't profile. Yes, you do. You do it when you get in a car. You know whether you're biased against women drivers or men drivers, or you know, uh, you know, yellow cars, green cars, blue cars. You, you profile no matter what. It may not be a person, maybe a thing, yeah. but. I can't help it. Unfortunately, that's, you want to call me what I am. I am what I am. It's a, yeah. I can't help it. That's the terrifying. Those are the people that hate us, right? Those are the people that are doing this stuff. So, right. I know. Like I said, it's a, it's a touchy subject, but I don't know what to say about it. We had a discussion. I said I can't help it. I can't help profiling. At least, at least keeping a double look going. Okay, they're good. You know, you got to do that double check well, sometimes. And, and the problem we're having now is it, it's not that the fact that it's you look at them, they're recruiting from within. So you get a blonde hair, blue eye, Caucasian dude that's full out radical Muslim that's fighting with ISIS. Yeah. And, and, and because and, and you know what the thing of it is is most of these kids and this is my now look, this is I want to put this out that this does yeah, not this reflect <laughs> this does not reflect full throttle in any way, shape, or form. This Listen. is John Gasson's opinion. The problem is as we get all these Tree hugging, hush puppy wearing, mommy and daddy weren't mad at me. They didn't give me enough lug, didn't enough hugs. They're pissed off at America, and then they take it out on us, and they go join some regime that gives them some self worth that they're looking for. And next thing you know, listen, you're not sugarcoating anything that the world don't know. No, uh, skinheads, uh, black gangs, you, know, you, you name it. When the kids, you know. When they want to rebel, they, they join a group, and those that group wants to be rebel rebellious. That's that's who they they flock to, and they they yep. see those kids and they bring them in and they make them part of the mold, and that's what it is. You know what they need to do? Put all these people on a motorcycle, send them out, and say ride from one coast to the other. By the time they get there, they're gonna be like, hey man, let's just go have a party and listen to some music and uh, <laughs> drink some beers and hang out. Just listen. Everybody needs a Harley. Everybody needs a motorcycle, just tell and they got to do a ride from one coast to the yep. other coast of the United States. Yeah. And let me tell you, the world be a great place. You know, when you're 18, you go, all right, boy, girl, here's a motorcycle. Get your group together. Ride from New York to uh, L.A. And um, let's see. Let's start here in, uh, in New York and do a video interview. When we get to L.A., let's see if you're the same person. Because exactly. I guarantee you're not. Nope. You put yourself on a motorcycle three, 4,000 miles. You're never the same person when you get done. I've done nope. it. You know what I mean? I did yep. 3,000 miles on a bike. And I'll tell you, when I got off, I, it's humbling. It's, it's, you know, you realize when you ride around mountains and you go through caves and that you may be badass, but there's, there's caves and mountains and trucks that are bigger <laughs> than you. And everything in the world is bigger than, than you are. Just realize that that's, you're, you're making your impact on that little spot at that little time. That's all right. you got to know. Yep. You know, I found myself on one of them trips. I said it before. I'm going to tell the story again because I love it, John. Hey, boy. I pulled over to the side of the road and... I don't even know God's country somewhere. There was nobody around me. I was uh, just divorced, and I was, you know, kind of losing my mind. I went on this trip. I rode from St. Louis to Sturgis, Sturgis to Vegas. Uh, ended up putting about 3,000 when I was done. But when I pulled over one time, I got off the bike, and there was nobody in front of me, nobody behind me. I couldn't see a car. There was nobody parked in this lot I was in. I was the only person for at least... Two miles, three miles, as far as I could see. Yep. It's hard to say that in life. You can sometimes. It's hard to yeah. say yeah. I'm the only person within two mile <laughs> radius of wherever I'm at. And it started freaking me out. And I said, you know what? No, I'm not going to get freaked out. I'm going to get motivated. And I said, this is, I made it this far by myself in the middle of nowhere. Now I'm going to nut up and finish where I'm heading to. And, <laughs> nut up. I you know, it. get there. And, and it was one of those just epiphanies. And I loved it. And that was, you know, everybody needs to ride a motorcycle at some point. We're a bike show, everybody. If you're watching, <clears throat> we ride motor, we're motorcycles. But we always start with a little bit of everything. I'm sure we're going to get on football here in a second. We're going to touch on it all. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah listen, we're going to talk. We're, I, I've been talking football for the last <laughs> three months. I've been dying to talk football. I'm like, <laughs> fantasy football, regular football. Well, I love it. We got a game on tonight at what time does that start? 8, 8 30? 8 30. Yes. That's right. I'm going to go out to Hogan's bike night and go see the football game out there. Oh, I'm, I'm just excited. You but, are excited. Uh, I am today. You know what? I, it was very dull in today. It was very, like I said, dull as in I really didn't want to. I, I just I couldn't get motivated and couldn't get excited because the, the day 
replays in my head every year at this time. And, and, and it's just so tough to me. And, and I, I went and they took those pictures today. And I sat in my car when they did the moment of silence over the radio. Uh, I could hear my voice getting shaky. It just it makes you cry. Think about somebody jumping out of a 90-something floor. Oh, yeah. The 90 something floor, so you don't burn to death. Whether you're gonna you're gonna fly down 90 floors, 900 feet, to do your death rather than burn to death, and that's what you chose to do because that you you had no other choice. Right. That is a terrifying thought, and hundreds of people had to do that. Yeah. Hundreds. It was either burn to death or jump out of the window, and that is just. I never want to be put in that position again. Mm-mm. They actually came out with something like that up in those those real, real tall buildings. Have you seen them? They're like parachutes up there. I've you heard can't about them. I haven't down. seen them. But that's a good idea. It's like they have a parachute area where if you can't get down the stairs, you put it on and jump out. I don't know if it's a parachute or a wing glide or something, but it's some kind of... If you can't get down like 50-something stories, it's, it's only for like 60 or 70 stories and above. Right. And uh, they can jump out and it'll, it'll open up automatically and all types of stuff. So. Well, and you know, that, that's something, you know, I'm not going to building architecture, but stuff like that. But that's something that's, that's been needed for a long time for those skyscrapers. I actually worked in my earlier years in Manhattan. Did you really? Yep. I worked for two company, Reds Printing, and then I worked for Airster Records. And <clears throat> we were in the Tower 2 all the time. For both companies. So you, see, I've never been. In, I've never been in New York, much less in the towers. Oh, I've dude. never even seen the towers personally. It, it, one of the most, one of the most awe-inspiring sights back then. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's kind of cool. You get you now. You, you know, you you could, you could go up the towers, and you get to the very top, and you can feel sway. You can feel it sway. You can feel sway. I mean, just, it's very slight, but it's like it's like going up into the um, the uh, the monument. Uh, Eiffel Tower? No, no, no. In Washington, D.C., the uh, Washington Monument. Is oh, Washington? Washington, yeah. Yeah. And you get to the top, just slightly. And I've been to they... the top of the Eiffel Tower in Vegas, and I felt the sway and, yeah. and how it moves. And well, let me tell you, I don't do well with heights already. Yeah. I, my, you know, Like I said, I, I, I bought uh, you know, skydiving for my wife to jump out of a plane. I sit on the ground and watch her jump out. All right, way to go. No, yeah. I, I like the ground. And then when they tell you in the Washington Monument that when you get to the very once they get to the top, they said, "Oh, and by the way, there's no mortar holding these blocks." What is it? Force. What? Just force. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the thing. So, now I know I'm never going to go know, up in that. Wife, I'm always going like this on the block, and my wife's like, "You better." Stop. You're over here shaking it. Don't shake the boat. And you're like, eh, "Let's see yeah. what happens with this thing." But but yeah, but New York, dude, is oh that was even today. It's absolutely phenomenal. We were—I was up there a couple of years ago, and and they hadn't gotten finished with the the new memorial, and just it's just so massive. I never realized. Yeah, you know, I get. I guess you know you just take everything for granted. I never realized the footprint of those just just those two buildings. Do you see the video today? It has the two oh. the two uh, um, never ending waterfalls. Yeah. Yeah. Now is the 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 big spear the what is it Tower One or Tower One w- w- Freedom Tower? What's Freedom, it called? Yep. It, that's done and complete, right? <clears throat> They're yeah. working in that now. That's everything's done. How, yeah. When was that done and completed? Do you uh, know? Two years ago. Was it? So it was a I couple guess, of years back. I wasn't I, I sure. So. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure either. That's, I kind of, I kind of lost the follow on that when you know I get busy and stuff like that because I don't. I'm not as much of a New Yorker. I'm, I didn't live there. I lived in Connecticut and, and took a train in and worked, but I still felt like I was a New Yorker because. Dude, I was in that I was in that rat race for two years. Oh, I and, know. Uh, John, you got to pull out of me, man. You're, huh? you're making me sweat with all these new lights we got and everything. Good Actually, Lord, believe it's not, hot there's here. less lights on you now <sighs> than there has been because of the new background. We don't we don't chroma key you anymore. Uh, I'm just fat and sweaty then today. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Something, John. I know. All I know is you got me feeling like I'm on a TV set with all these million lights well, on me. You know what? What? It's time to take a break anyway. I figured it was time to take a break. But we want to start off and talk about the 9-11. It is, it is the, the topic of the day because of today, 13 years ago, it happened. Yeah. Um, you know what? It's, uh, it's something everybody knows where they were. And I tell you, I guarantee everybody that knew where they were has told their story at one time today, shape, or form. Uh, I've told it three times today. Did you? I mean, yep. I've told it three or four personally. And uh, I knew I was going to talk about it on the show because it, uh, it just <clears> happened to fall on today. And uh, you know what? Uh, it's uh, it, it brought America together when we were not really together at the time. I think, and it, yeah. it, it it was a bad way for it to do it. But to see the world join together as we did when this terrible thing happened, 
that's that's what is the world is. We're, yeah. we're Americans, and it wasn't black, white, green, blue. Nope. It was Americans, and we stand up, and we're going to do what we do because this horrible thing happened. So, yes, absolutely. All right, let's go to break. We're going to go to break. We'll be right back to talk about all the motorcycle stuff coming up this weekend and then coming Uh-oh. up in the future here, September and October. We'll be right back. I've been representing accident victims for nearly a decade, and I've always wanted an office where my clients would feel comfortable and welcome. I'm attorney Fran Hosh, and I've also always been a fighter, never backing down to any insurance company or their attorneys when it comes to representing my clients' rights. Let me deal with the insurance company so you don't have to. If you've been injured in an accident, please call me at 866-LAW-FRAN or log on to lawfran.com. The last several years have been confusing and trying for homeowners. Advisors Mortgage and Financial Group was there before the housing crisis, during, and we are still here now advising people of their options and helping them choose the best financial solutions for their family. You do have options, and today's market promises lots of opportunities. We have found that there are a lot of questions out there and misinformation, and we want you to know we have answers. Advisors Mortgage and Financial Group providing solutions today for a better tomorrow. Everybody wants. You can only get it at gyms. Sorry, Freddie. Sound does matter.
revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. That, that was me, that Batani guy you guys were, were doing? Urgh. That was me. Urgh. That was my back muscles. And hey, I forgot to turn the fan off. I'm going to leave it on for you. Listen, the fans, is it loud? Can you hear it blowing in the wind? No, the microphone? I can just, it's all right. Listen, I, I, I look shiny in the last one. I'm sitting here going, man, I'm sweating <laughs> my butt off. You got me all, got to turn the AC down or something. Anyways, John, we were talking about some of the events coming up this weekend. And this is the cover of the newest issue, the Cody River Bike Fest. There it we is. We love Cody River Bike Fest. That's coming up October 10th, 11th, and 12th. Big, great sponsors on it. We got uh, Fran Hash Law, Fran.com, uh, 866-LAW-FRAN, Team Farrell, Tina, Steve, Farrell Roofing, Team Farrell, amazing people. They are, those two right there together are probably the powerhouses in this area with business-wise, wouldn't you say? Fran and, and, and Farrell. Fran, Farrell, I mean, and if Fort there's Model. not a, Yep. If there's not a feral car driving around, you're seeing a Fran billboard. I mean, uh, let's let's face it. There's <laughs> no. I see, I see buses. Oh, yeah, that's right. The feral buses too. Buses, yeah. And then of course Tampa Harley Davidson with Tampa Brandon and Newport Ritchie, uh, Harley Davidson, and the West Pasco Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Cody River's going to be. Throttle. A, and oh, well, full throttle, full, of course. Dude, you guys rock. Sorry, look, full throttle, full We're throttle badasses. logo. Yes. We we're on there, too. We're excited about that. October 10th through the 12th. There's so much going on with that. We'll talk about it when we get there, but we're <laughs> going to flip through the book and talk about some of the events coming up. Number one, the AIM Expo. You want to bring that big, John, so people can see it? Yep, absolutely. Thank you, sir. The uh, AIM Expo is the, um, let's see, how do they put it? It's the American In International Motorcycle Expo, AIM Expo. It's uh, held at the Orlando Convention Center, or whatever they call that convention center over there. Yep. Um, big event. I went to it. It's very convention feeling. It's it's. I would say it's more of a convention than an expo. Um, I guess so the words it, are interchangeable. You would say. So it feels like a tray show. You're in a big, carpeted, yeah. you know, uh, convention center, right. and you're going up and down rows and rows of uh, you know motorcycles. Everything in there's. Has something to do with motorcycles. It's really cool. Great event. We got a code on there, FFT14. Get your dollar off. That's the Ooh, best we can get. That's what they gave us. Get your hey, dollar off that's getting pretty in. Good. That's it's an advance, so it's eleven dollars to get in. If you go there and buy it the day of, it's fifteen. So hold on one second. <coughs> Excuse me, was that loud? I, I muted you. Oh, thank you. Um, I can do that. I need <laughs> I need the mute button, huh? I need a cough button. <coughs> one day I'll get you one. Just like the red light where I can look at the camera and go, where are we, where are we doing it? Uh, he can already yell at me through typing, by the way, everybody. He can tell That's me coming. when it's time to break, so I already uh, like that. The red lights are coming. The coming? I like it. Because you know what? When I, when I trade my iPhone 5 for the oh, iPhone 6 Plus, the iPhones that we have in-house are staying as tally lights. That's it. He comes up and he says, the new iPhone's bigger than your Android. <laughs> that was our commercial break. That's what, the new iPhone's bigger than your Android, and I'm already getting it. I already got a pre-order, and I'm like, yes. listen, I've had this now for, I think, five, six months. I love it. This is, I like the S3 I had. This is the S5. If they make an S10, I'm going to love that one, too. It just works for what I do. I have to say, I've, I've, it's really nice to see you really happy about a product. Oh, listen, and... I've had the S the S series phones now for that S three I had yep. for uh, God two years three years. I know, it was, thing was I mean, everywhere with you. It was it's it's everywhere. I live on this thing. We all do it anymore on our phones. But for business wise, it's it's been great. Um, let's flip through. We got uh, bike night tonight at Hogan's right there on the left with Jimmy Hart, mouth of the south, uh, surrounded by girls. That's Jimmy Hart, I guess, huh? And then mm -hmm. in October, the uh, last weekend of October, the twenty sixth is the 11th anniversary party at Quaker Steak and Lube. Uh, you know what? This new host guy that's doing uh, uh, the Bone Rewind, this uh, cat named Mo. Cat he, named Mo. He's really good. He is really. I like him. Really good. He's really good on the mic. He's very personable. You know, I, um, I, I when I first met him, I said, well, we'll see how this goes. You know, it's a whole different view from what, who was up there before. And this guy's really taking it under his wing, loving it. I think the Friday before I go dye my beard pink, so the last Friday of this month, 
I'm going to go on the show at night on their Bone Rewind and uh, get on the show with them and talk and do what we got to do. So he invited me on. I said, heck yeah, I'm going to be on the show. I'm nervous, so I've never done any kind of TV or radio before. I listened to him the other night on the way home from uh, Jim's last week. I, he's good. He's I funny. Like I, you know, he used to run that overnight. That I think it was like one to three. Or is that what he did? It was a weird, weird time, and um, I'm glad they moved him into that um, to into that seven to eleven spot. I think is what it is because I got tired of hearing the Billy. I, I didn't want to hear the Billy Madison show again. Not at night. I like no. him during the day because they yeah. make me laugh when I'm driving around. Yeah, but it's, it was the same show. Oh, was it the same well, one? They just do a. It's a, it's a replay. Oh yeah. I don't if like you that listen to him in the morning. And listen to him at night. It's the same. Crap. Hey, John. By the way, what is that behind your head? They, oh, they were showing football highlights behind your head. Oh yeah. I'm no, just making sure you, you know. That's uh, John Stewart. Is yeah, but he was, is that he, he was talking football. They were showing football highlights. So oh, I'm just saying. This rice controversy just out of hand. Oh, out of out of hand. Out of hand. Like, out of hand. Now, now they're saying he had they had the video in April, and they were only still going to give him a two a two game suspension. Yeah. yeah listen, no. he 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 needs to be. <clears throat> No, it goes let's farther just, let's than stay that. With, let's, let's stay with the, with the yeah, magazine but right, right now. Okay, real quick. Roger Goodell, right? He's the NFL commissioner guy? Yeah. Yeah, he knew about it, and that's all they were going to put the punishment on? That's wrong. He needs to be fired. Rice will never play again. So In NFL, who will play Can- Canadian? Uh, I don't think so. <coughs> no. I, 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 no, I don't think so. I, I think because they're so polite up there, they're not, not looking for a woman beater. Their Mounties don't even have guns, do they? Yeah. <laughs> so you know, it's this dude is. I'm telling you, you know what? Look, and I know she came out. Oh, don't don't judge my man. Blah blah blah. But let me tell you she something. She fell into the Johnny me, Manziel. When a guy hits a woman like he, I mean, he didn't just pop pop pop. He knocked the crap out of her and then drug her out like a bag of trash. So as far as I'm concerned, that dude should never work for. Anybody. I mean, this dude should be homeless, penniless, lived under a bridge in somewhere besides the United States. I agree. He's a piece there's, of crap. There's nothing in the world and for that. And if he that. wants to come to my house, I don't give a crap how big he is. He can come on because he, 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 won't, he won't do that to me. I agree. I agree full-heartedly with you. I think that whole story is BS. Anyway, like anyway. you said... I, I, but I, I want to touch on it too. We are going to talk about football at the end of the we'll show. Do, we'll do it later. We'll do it at the end of the show. But so, eleven year anniversary. That's awesome. Uh, eleven years at uh, Quaker State and can lube for them. And uh, my wife's been there for ten of them. If you can believe that. When so, is this again? Uh, uh, October twenty sixth. October twenty sixth. They uh, they're giving away eleven one hundred dollar gift cards from Jim's and eleven one hundred dollar gift cards from Fan Hash. Halloween costume contest. How excited are you for that? Already doing Halloween costume contest. Dude, <laughs> Walking Dead. Everybody's going to be a Walking Dead Walking zombie dead. this year, aren't they? Yep. All right. That should be a lot of fun. Moving on, we're going to um, flip through some of these next events coming up. I'll get you. Okay, the uh, what page are we on? You would um, think I would hold know on, that. I'm sorry. I'm, I got someone texting me. Oh, it's okay. Page nine. They're saying, they're saying motorcycles, not crap. <clears throat> oh, tell us about our show? Yeah. Hey, guess what? It's our show. We'll talk about whatever we want to talk about. Damn, straight and that's what we do because... I, I don't see any script here or anybody. John, anybody paying us to do this? Nope. All right, so we can talk about whatever the hell we want to talk that's about. That's right. We're going to talk about motorcycles. We love them. Listen, that's what we do. But there's life behind besides motorcycles that we can bring in to the motorcycle world that's and right. take out of the motorcycle world. You know, so, hey, boom. look, we might have some motorcycles guys that say, hey, look, you know, full throttle really keeps me up on stuff, so i got to watch it. Yeah. We talk about all events, including yeah. full th- including motorcycle stuff. Yeah. Not that you can't catch up on Facebook and YouTube and everything else in the world. But, but we're better. Yes, yeah, right. We are better. You know why? Because we say so, and you can't change my that's mind and right. tell me if we're better or not. Right, John? That's correct. Just like Drew Garabo on the radio, 102.5 The Bone. That's right. You don't you know like what? it, don't watch. You're wrong. You're wrong because that's not the way I think, and that's why this is our show, <laughs> and we can say whatever the hell we want. That's right. We should have Drew Garabo on here one time. Dude, that'd be hilarious. I would be terrified. I- I'll tell you right now. I would call out Drew Garabo to come on a show because I would probably shut up and never say a word because he would tear me down to this small because that man is a quick-witted SOB. Let me tell you, he is. You ever listen to Drew Garabo's show? He's an ass, but he's funny. Yeah. This weekend, there are a few events. I'm going to flip through. John, when you flip, I'll tell you about them. Okay. This, this first one is right there. Jim's Open House, the 2015 Harley-Davidson's. 
are in. They had them before. Listen to this. How remember we were at the gyms last week? Yeah. They had the motorcycles here before they got back from the convention that was showing them about the new motorcycles. Yeah, dude, those are awesome. Oh. They're sweet. Oh like, my god. Harley is finally fine tuning their machine to a point where they've got it to where they want it. Now it's the so minute stuff that you don't even see they're changing. They've changed to make it better for you. Like flips in the in the in the um uh, fairings and and different uh, ways that the vents come in and it's it's just minute stuff that you don't think about that makes the whole bike work ten times better. Absolutely. Um, the 2014s are awesome. The 2015s are, are spectacular. Go get a new Harley Davidson. Go see Jim's Tampa. Any great Harley Davidson area in this area or the state of Florida. We're based in the state of Florida, so go to anyone in the state of Florida, but not outside the state of Florida. No, they no, suck. No, no. So. Uh, anyway, uh, Saturday, Jim's Harley Davidson from 10 to 3. You can schedule a test ride, live music, new products. They're doing an infotainment workshop. Infotainment. What's an infotainment? Right? Infotainment, infotainment is their new information center that's on the Harley. So I sat down for three seconds and started me, and I couldn't even figure it out. I'm a tech savvy guy. It's cool. That It's really neat what they have available on their infotainment thing. Uh, uh, on the new Harleys, on the fairings and everything like that. And they got two it different styles. Cool. And so stop in, go try out a new 2015. But uh, I'll tell you, don't do it if you don't want to buy a motorcycle. Because if you do go ride one, you're going to want to buy it. And I'll tell you that right now. Ain't that right, John? Uh, dude, I have got to get my license so bad. It's, um, I've got to get it back, and i got to get it back on a motorcycle. Oh, I, was watching, I was watching today, and it's like, ugh, i gotta get, I got to get back on the bike. We'll get you on a bike. It's killing me. We're going to go to page 14 now, Madeira Beach Bike Week, Bike Fest. It is, uh, I'm going to be on the left side, get right there. It's uh, a gathering of the finest bike enthusiasts and most exotic new and vintage motorcycles. This weekend, 10-class bike show, vendors and food, live music, 50-50 raffle, silent auction. Charlie Humphrey is going to be helping MC it. It's from 10 to 5. It's right behind the brown boxer on Madeira Beach. Uh, the Sick Chicks are putting it on, the SIK Promotions. I met them last year. I called them the Sick Chicks. They kind of ran with it. Now they made their own shirts and called themselves the Sick Chicks. Oh, this like, is the one that we, <clears throat> we, um, I shot at last year with the guys. Yeah, do we, do we have the promo? Well, I don't want to run a promo from last year. We have uh, some shots from last year. I think in our intro, the girls washing bikes in the, bikini, yes, in the yep. bikinis. Yep. And we, this was, you came out and everybody said, Full Throttle Rocks. Yeah, we, it was a good time. So this marks about a year from our first uh, wow, yeah. out, out and about then, doesn't it? Dang, dude. Listen to that. John, we got to do a one-year party. Woo! There it is. That was our one-year party. one-year party. <laughs> uh, see? That's crap. We hope you enjoy it. You Thank know? you. It's our crap. Let's see what else is going on this weekend. There what is, is, wait a minute. What is this? Uh, Flitterix? 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 What? Shark Week just got more badass. Yeah, we're cursing this month in this book, huh? Oh, my God. Well, they sent it in during Shark Week, but it was oh, in, it. so it came out after. But uh, it's that's kind of cool, thing. though. Yeah, it's a cool ad, isn't it? It is cool. It was a naked swimming chick that, was, that got my head. No, I'm just kidding. See, it's. Uh, I think the. I, this was Jaws, of course. Everybody gets the joke that it was Jaws, yeah. but uh, they brought the Road Glide back, and uh, that would, they took a year off, and then they brought it back onto the market because they wanted to revamp it. Uh, and I think they did a great job. This actually is our Black Widow Harley Davidson in Port Charlotte. Yeah, Port Black Charlotte. Widow H D. Great dealership down there, right next to where the uh, Rays play their spring ball, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool stadium, great area. Good, down it's by a good Tol- shop. It's a good yeah. shop. Yeah. Down by good, Toledo Blade good Boulevard. Good times. Good times. Good, good times of Black Widow. All right, what else coming up here? I got oh, flip through. Hey, what's this? Bike Builders Wanted? For oh, what? yeah, that's for the for Expo what, what coming up in for? January. How'd that get in there? Oh, I'm already looking for builders. I already got I got a couple builders today that have actually hit me up that want to do the show. Uh, that's January. Everybody knows about the Bike Builder Invitational. We give away twenty thousand dollars in cash and prizes. First place is five thousand dollars cash, a one-off Super Bowl style ring worth an estimated five thousand dollars, and plus tons more with two trophies and you know a check for your wall to put on. Then we got five classes that win $1,000 each. It's broken down to 500, 300, 200 for first, second, third. And um, uh, we only have 45 bikes in the show. It's judged by the IMBBA, International Master Bike Builder Association. We're looking for full, unique custom builds. If you guys are a builder and you want to enter the show and you want to get out of the cold weather up north in January and come down here, 
bring your butts on down. Let's see your bike first and get you in and come out and have a good time. There you My go. information's at the bottom. Get a hold of me if you want. Tony C. Full Throttle. Tony C. at Full Throttle Magazine. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> We're bringing it all back here from the 80s to the 90s. Oh, wait. No. <laughs> we got Champagne coming to the front stage. Champagne. Oh, my God. We found oh. him. <laughs> wait. I found a new calling, huh? <laughs> Get up there and tuck a buck. Tipping's not just a city in China. Oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> Moving on. We got... Uh, I've, heard, I've heard them all, let me yes. say. Um, oh, God. I'm all over the place. Where are we at here? Do, 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 do. We got the... The 911 ride for the AMVETS on page 32. You're going to have to keep on flipping. Um, page 32, AMVETS on, post 44. Keep going. No, I don't think you passed it yet. No, I know. I just oh, you had stopped to stop with the girl, more. didn't you? Yeah. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, it was the green bike. I, I figured. That. Oh, that's, that's the, the green. one you stopped on. Yeah. Keep flipping. And then we're going to stop at the, there it is, the AMVETS post 44, 7th annual 911 ride. This is the one that ends up at the, um, the Veterans Memorial Park on Hills on uh, out on um, what road is that? I should look at the thing. Highway 301 in Tampa. Yes. Uh, you know they got the big military vehicles there and everything like yes. that. Excuse me, John. Can you mute me for a second? <coughs> Excuse me. I had yep. to cough again. But anyway, this is a big ride. A lot of groups, a lot of clubs do it. Uh, there's usually a couple thousand people on this ride. It's awesome. Uh, tickets available for ten dollars at the AmVets Post Forty Four. That's five five two one State Route Sixty in Plant City. Um, Fifteen dollars for passengers. Ten dollars for riders. Includes food. Um, they end at the the park, and there's a ceremony and everything. Last year, my wife and I did it, and it was it's moving. I don't care. Every event you do, it's it's. If you don't shed a tear or at least get choked up a little bit on what happens and, and who we cel celebrate, the, the people that we lost and the people that get, went in there and lost their lives trying to help others and our first uh, responders and everything, I don't know if you're, if you're a human being or not because it's, it's a sad day, but at the same time, it brought this country back together. So that's why we do these 9-11 rides, and bikers are very much into it. The biker community is, is always there, uh, and, and we raise money for great causes. And, you know, 9-11, money goes to good causes. Post uh, the AMVETS, American Veterans. Come on now. That's what it's all about. That's right. Um, Tampa Harley-Davidson, I was looking for another one. I don't have the picture in here. Tampa Harley-Davidson is celebrating their 17th anniversary this weekend. It's on our Facebook page, John. I don't know if you can jump over there to that. Um, give me a second. I can. Okie dokie. Um, I put it up today. There was, a, uh, there was a group of all the events that are coming up this weekend. I put it on our Facebook page. By the way, which are go check out our Facebook page. You want to see what's going on. Legit, all the time I'm posting new events and the events coming up the weekend. Look up Florida Full Throttle. Uh, we got 85,000 likes on there. I keep it very up to date. I am always updating what's going on, where events are happening at, all that good stuff, so that you know and you're informed and where to go and what to do. But Tampa Harley-Davidson on Dale Mabry, right by the stadium, about, uh, I would say, a mile north of the stadium, um, is having their 17th anniversary party. Uh, they got food and drinks and a Miss uh, Harley contest. Usually ends up being a bikini contest So when they do it. They got that big tiki deck out there. Uh, great times. Tampa Harley's got a very good dealership. Um, and we should have a lot of fun out there. So, did we not find it? Yeah, no, no, I got it. I okay, he's got it. John's a man. I know he would. But anyway, they um, they were advertising it. It was on the radio, and we're oh, talking. You're no. talking gyms. Gyms. Sorry. No, Tampa. We'll get this stuff straight. All you haters out there saying we're not talking about the right thing. See, we're talking about motorcycle stuff now. Which one is it? Tampa. It's got orange with a girl on it. Oh, yeah. Got it. <laughs> I should have said that in the beginning. Yeah. The orange yeah. one with the girl on it. There we go. What? September 13th, 11 to 5. They got live music, cold beer, great food, Miss Harley Girl Contest, Jan Hughes Motorcycle Sale. Oh, by the way, you register to win a $2,500 shopping spree. You know you can spend $2,500 on in, in Harley store? Man, you can yeah, get at least three can, shirts. And, and, and She'd be the one you buy it for. You get at least three shirts there for that price. I mean, come on. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, at least three. No, well, maybe a four. Maybe four. Uh, if you squeeze it in. I like those guys. It's all right. Tampa Harley's good. Good group good of people. people. Love them. And we're going to be out there. And then... Um, of course, uh, you got uh, the Mad Beach Bike Fest, Brandon, uh, our gyms. I'm trying to remember them all that we were talking about this weekend. That's it. You got me too hot. Can we go to a break and then come back talk football? Oh, you know what? Let's go to break. 
And uh, I gotta get another fan on me. Look at me. Look, I am shiny. You got you got this, this all hot up here. <laughs> so shiny. Oh man, I'm sweating right. like a. I'm right. just gonna leave that to your imagination. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna play some commercials, pay some bills. By the way, I haven't said it a lot enough yet. We love Fan Hash. Lawfran.com. 866-LAWFRAN. Check out their new back cover. They sent it last month. Look at that. 866-LAWFRAN. All their people right there on the back with Fran on a bike right there in the middle. The Fran Hash Law Group. Injury Law. You need them. Call them. They'll take care of you. John, take us a break. We'll be right back. I've been representing accident victims for nearly a decade. And I've always wanted an office where my clients would feel comfortable and welcome. I'm attorney Fran Hosh. And I've also always been a fighter never backing down to any insurance company or their attorneys when it comes to representing my clients' rights. Let me deal with the insurance company so you don't have to. If you've been injured in an accident, please call me at 866-LAW-FRAN or log on to lawfran.com. The last several years have been confusing and trying for homeowners. Advisors Mortgage and Financial Group was there before the housing crisis, during, and we are still here now advising people of their options and helping them choose the best financial solutions for their family. You do have options, and today's market promises lots of opportunities. We have found that there are a lot of questions out there and misinformation, and we want you to know we have answers. Advisors Mortgage and Financial Group providing solutions today for a better tomorrow. Everybody wants. You can only get it at gyms. Sorry, Freddie. Sound does matter.
Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. What's up? We crank the AC back up. We're sitting here BSing. I like I like what we just talked about, John. I'm, we're going to let people know about that sooner than later because I, we're going to make All that right. happen. I'm good. But uh, look at my pink beard. Oh, let me find that. that you, is... you may have seen it on uh, Facebook. You may have seen it. But I'm going to do it. I have called out for charity uh, to come out and dye your beard pink. Now, it, this started as a joke. I want everybody to know this. started as a joke because I grew my beard out. Everybody's seen my big old long beard now, and it's red and whatever. We were joking. But Charlie Humphreys goes, why don't you dye that beard pink for October? And I said... Why doesn't everybody dye their beard pink for October? He goes, you should do it here. Next thing you know, like yours and mine, John, our little hammering session where we yep. sit there and throw stuff against the wall and go with it. Yep. We said, you know what? I called my aunt who does hair. She's going to get a uh, kind of thing to block people's faces off, and we're going to spray paint everybody's facial hair pink. I have sent that out to all the news stations. I called every biker out. It don't matter if you got a dollar to $20. That's what we're asking for. You throw a donation in, we'll dye your beard pink. We're going to get a big shot of everybody. And I think this one gentleman told me his mother is a two-time or three-time survivor of breast cancer, and she's 91 years old and wants to come out. That's awesome. So we are going to have a lot of people out there dyeing their beards pink or ladies putting on fake pink mustaches because we're going to have those for purchase for, ch for donations as well. Yep. Um, we're going to buy a bunch of pink mustaches <laughs> so ladies can wear around all October 1st at Bike Night for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is October. We all know this. Uh, so come on out to Bike Night. Quaker Steak and Lou, usually two to 3,000 people. We hope the weather's great because we're going to be dyeing our beards pink and having a good time and raising money for breast cancer awareness. The money's going to go to Breast Cancer Killers. Uh, breast Cancer Killers is a group that goes, the money goes directly to females in need of assistance. I will be tracking how much we collected, how much goes to them, and where it goes. And they're going to let us know, and I'm going to give everybody an update. Because that's what I want to see anymore. I'm calling out all charities. You do a big event, you raise money. I want you to show where it goes. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want to give you $20 and make it disappear and, oh, it paid this and somebody's salary. If you raise $1,000, where did that $1,000 go? Or just per se $900. You had expenses, you took them out. That's okay. I want legitimacy out there anymore. I'm tired of giving $20, $50, $100, and then you hear down the road, well, you know only 1% of what you gave goes to the charity and everything else goes to pay. I'm tired right. of that crap. I'm tired of it. If you're a chair, I've sat on charity boards before, many of them. I started charities. I sat on boards. I've sat on committees. I never took a dime. There's no reason to take a dime. I do it because I want to and because I'm here to help the community who needs it, not lie in my pockets. I'm calling you out, peoples. Right, John? Oh. Yep. And uh, then that, you know what? Um, I'm going to We're not going to touch talk on football for a second. I do want to touch on something. Um, you know, I've had a, a few uh, things out there lately, just uh, with the motorcycle world and, and me, and, and kind of question my integrity in this industry. And I, I will stand up here and tell anybody to their face that I, my my integrity in this motorcycle industry is what it is. I hide nothing. I have nothing to hide. I, I, I am involved in this to the utmost degree. I've lived in this motorcycle community my entire life being here in the state of Florida. Um, you're going to read a mission statement in next month's magazine about who I am and what I stand for. And I'm here for the motorcycle community. I am a business in this community, so I have to sell advertising to make that happen. John, you know that as well as anybody else, Amen, correct? Amen, brother. And you know what? I'll put my character up against anybody else out there if you have to say any negative words about me. And you know what? I'm the kind of person that comes straight at your face and tells you what I am and what I stand for. You see it. I'm doing. I'm dying my beard pink for charity. I sit on boards of charity. I, I, I've created charities to help raise money to a point where I raised eight bikes one year for a charity to where it's now over 200, 300 bicycles that go to a charity every year. That's what I stand for. I'm here for the betterment of our motorcycle community. You can look me up and, and anything you want. I have no record, no skeletons in my closet, nothing to hide. So Man, I just want to. I just want to clear it up there. If anybody has any questions about me or my livelihood or what I do, 
bring it on. Pick up the phone. I'll give you my number. It's in the book every month, and I don't hide it. So I just wanted to clarify something. John, I hope you didn't mind me getting on my soapbox there for a second. Dude, I love it. So, I'm, 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 sometimes I wish you just – the one thing i got to say about you, and I've known you now for a little bit over a year, is it just – you 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 take a lot of crap from a lot of people. And you don't ever get fired up. I mean, you get fired up, but you don't get fired up. You I get, don't get fired like, up in public. You know what? I get fired up in, in a room where I deserve yep. to get fired up. I'll yell at the walls. When I walk out of that room, I feel better. Yeah, it's, but it's it's. I'm it, I'm really happy to see you just kind of put it out there. That's just saying. Because I'm a hothead, and I just let people know the way it is. And It's like that. I put a post up the other day. I'm not funny. I'm really mean. People just think <laughs> people I'm People just think you're funny. Well, listen, people want to take shots at me and make fun of me and, and try and call out my and, – and, and, and put me out there and try and call out who I am and what I do. Listen, you guys got any questions or problems, you know my number. You know where to find me. I'll tell you where my office is. I'll tell you my cell number. You can call me at any given time, and I'll tell you who I am and what I stand for. That that's boy. where I'm at in life, everybody, and I handle things straight up. So that's my word of advice for today. <laughs> Here I am. I, I had to put something out there. I wasn't going to, but you know what? I got no. riled up later earlier in the nope. week. So I said, here I am. That's what I'm doing. John, we had a good time today, huh? Yep. This hour actually flew by quicker than I've ever seen before. Yes. Oh, what's this? What's this? Okay, now, games this week. Are we going to do a pick em? Yeah, let's pick All right, em. bring it up. Let me see them. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm doing this the right way. I you think. got a pen? Are you going to mark down your picks and my picks? Uh, sure. All right. Okay, so Dolphins and Bills. Well, what about tonight? Oh, well, Steelers and Ravens? Uh, I'm going Ravens. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going Steelers. I figured you'd go Steelers. Aren't you a Steelers fan? No. But I'm not a Baltimore fan either. All right, Dolphins, Bills. Um, Dolphins. Easy. I'm, I'm with you on that. Bills suck. Yep. Lions, Panthers, Panthers. Really over yeah. Megatron? No way. Lions yeah. look way too good. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I see I, them going. I see them going deep in the playoffs. Did you Did you watch them Monday night? Yeah, and I wasn't impressed. I was. New York just didn't show up. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, it was just sad. Let's see. Let's see him go against the Panthers. See what happens. I yeah. like. I like the Lions uh, in that one. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm going North Carolina just because I, I, I kind of like them. When they first came on the scenes, they were they were starting to. Be okay with well, me, so. Cam Newton's going to be a beast this year too. I, yeah. I go, and, and their new their their um, Benjamin receiver is as as big as Megatron is, and he's yep. going to be just as good. He's a rookie. Sorry. And the next one's easy. Cowboys. <laughs> Titans. <laughs> I'm taking Titans. I don't even like the Cowboys. I know. Everybody you love the Cowboys. Yeah, I do. See, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Just just. Oh, second. John, John, John. America's team. Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah. There Cowboys. it is. Um, so anyway, is that the star or the tar star? Oh wait, never mind. It's yeah. Michael Sam. Uh, uh, Patriots Vikings. That's a good one. I, I'm gonna go to uh, Patriots. Are we go? Are we gonna do this every way down? I'm going Vikings because I really like the Vikings. I okay, think. that's fine. Seahawks Chargers. Seahawks. Seahawks. That's easy. Easy. Chief Broncos. Yeah. Broncos. Yep. Texans Raiders. Texans. Uh, I yeah. I gotta go with Texans. Raiders kind of stink this year. Yep. Saints Brown Saints. Saints. I mean, that's that's not hard. Johnny, when Johnny put Johnny football in there, I'll be going for some Browns. But right yeah, now, I'm going no, for Saints. Ain't there. Falcons, B- uh, Bengals. Falcons. Yep, I agree. Jaguars, Redskins. Uh, I got to go with RG three. He's got to bounce back, doesn't he? I mean, I'm he's going. Stunk. I'm going with the Redskins. Oh, the potatoes. The Red Skins. I see that they're still named the Red Skins. Yeah, Somebody put uh, their logo with a potato on there. I said, great, now we got to rename the potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cardinals, Giants. God. Cardinals. Cardinals. Yeah, I'm not. Giants look like crap on Monday. Rams, Buccaneers. Buckos, baby. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the Rams are going to come in real strong. Did they, didn't they only score like six points their first game last week? It was yeah, bad. Buccaneers yeah. didn't even show up. Yeah. So I'm all worried there. Um, <clears throat> Jets, Packers. J E T S. Yeah. I like them. So. Uh, Bears, 49ers. I'm 49ers. a Niners fan. Yeah, 49ers. I got their D in my fantasy, so I really like, like the Niners. And then Eagles, Coats. You know what? It's going to be an amazing game. I'm so excited for the Monday night game, and I don't know. I, I'm going to go Colts. I, you know, I'm leaning towards the Eagles just because they're both good. I mean, God, they're full, you got Foles against Luck. You got, there's a, 
I don't know. I'm going to go Eagles because you're going Colts. So, okay. did you mark them down at all? Uh, no, but I know. All right. I know. Yeah, That's going to be fun. We yeah. should do this every week and see what, how we do. On the, all right. The, next week, we'll, you know what? I'll build a bracket. Oh, we'll call shizzle. It Tony's picks and John's picks. You know what? May I, if anybody's watching, can they get involved? What do you think? Can we work that out? Yeah, actually, we can. You know what? We'll mess it. We'll get something going for next week's show. We'll talk about how we're going to do our football picks a week. Uh, we'll get the iPad up here, and we'll take some people who could chat in with us. Yes. John, we'll get some chatting going on. Yep. And uh, I'll take whoever answers first, and John, you have to take the, the other team, or vice versa. We'll do it like that. Okay. So we'll just we'll take whatever our viewers want us to take. So again, we're going to talk football. We're going to talk current events. We're going to talk motorcycles. We're going to talk life here at Full Throttle because that's the way we live, baby, right? That's right. Full throttle. Full John, throttle. take us away because we're going. we got stuff to do. Football yep. to watch. You know what? Everybody, we'll see you next week. Same bike time, same bike channel. See, see you. Ya.